I often get the uh, question if your brain focus, your brain dominance, if that changes over time. What we've seen that in children, uh, it often happens because they are influenced by teachers and parents. And so we, we normally advise parents to have the, the profile of their children done more or less when it's primary school, elementary school, and then maybe again before they leave high school. In adults, we have found that about 80% of adults, they stay more or less within the same profile. 20% do change because of many, many circumstances. It could be a trauma or they change dramatically, you know, their job changes dramatically and, and so it can happen. But to me, uh, that, that should not be the issue. The issue should be to understand that you have your preference, it's fine, but we live in a world where the people around you, your, your family, your colleagues, whatever, and to have a kind of a happy, successful life, you need to understand that you must be able to move in and out of these quadrants. If you're selling a car, you must understand that the person uh, coming into the showroom, that you must be able to move into that person's brain to be able to sell this car. If you're teaching, you're standing in front of a group of children, you must understand in that 40 minutes, you must be able to move between all these quadrants to explain so that every child needs to understand. If you don't, if you stay within your dominance when you teach, you will be missing 70% of the learning ability of the child. Because the way it works is that your teaching dominance, then it never reaches the child's learning dominance. If you're able to do that, you must be able to move between, to me, all the quadrants of the brain. We've seen this a year or two ago, we trained 200 teachers of mathematics. And we see, we've seen dramatic changes when they started teaching mathematics with their whole brain. Now the results actually moved up in some schools from a 20% average to an 80% average. This is what happens when, when it's whole brain. We've seen this in, in, in sporting teams, international teams that we work with. How playing with their whole brain, how they became world champions and so on. The moment you're able to understand, I've got my preferred brain, that's fine. But I am able to move in and out when, when circumstances demand that. But there's another issue here. That teacher teaching now the whole brain has a little piece of paper in front of him or her and then sort of looks at the paper and you teach and that's what you do every day and, and there's wonderful results, but it's still a doing thing. It's something you, you put down in front of you and, you and you sort of look at it and you study it and you do it. It's a doing kind of thing. The ultimate aim, I believe, should be that you move from the doing to the being when you don't have to put that paper in front of you anymore. When you become so whole brain that you teach whole brain without having this document in front of you. It's like the Dumini, the past on a Sunday morning, preaches whole brain without having that little piece of paper in front of him. Or a great sportsman doesn't stand like this and now catches the ball, just puts out the hand and catches the ball. Because it's in the being. The more you committed to this, to creativity, the more you committed to the whole brain, the more you persevere, the more you can, there come a day when it's just part of you. And the moment it's part of you, when it's just that part of your, your being, everything changes for you. Then you are the teacher that just attracts children. You are the person that sells and customers like being with you. And those are the children and, and, and parents where the children think, I feel so comfortable here in my, this, it's everywhere. So I, I would urge you that it's not a process that just sort of stops. It's not like a short term kind of thing. It's a lifelong thing, but the more you're committed to this, the more you will reap unbelievable, unbelievable benefits.